Have you ever tricked your friend into starting a YouTube channel? Is this where I... Yeah. It's gonna be awkward though. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I've told you I'm not doing this. This is Blake. Blake Hunter Looney. Now, I know what you're thinking. I've seen that guy before. Isn't he the one from the 1984 American Martial Arts drama The Karate Kid? Yep, that's him. Hey. This, however, is not him. Fuck. Yes. No. Yes. Awesome. No. Happy With that out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> It began nine years ago, at the turn of the decade. In high school, Blake was well on his way to the summit of cool. I'll grant you that Blake was never really cool in the Friday night sports sense of the word. It's football, baseball. Go Madden! But in the sense of the nerd, he was bleeding cool. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. At last, I was two grades behind him and it was pretty much like having a crush on that upperclassman that you never stood a chance with. One of my first memories with him was awkwardly standing in a circle of Blake's friends and laughing at a pitch perfect recreation of Valerie Plain by the Decemberists. Blake was like the James Donovan holiday of 2000's nerd culture. I pretty quickly became enamored with his ability to entertain and incite rolling laughter with his endlessly canonical mind. We are a proud nation, indivisible, with liberty, haggis, ale, and all. On occasion, and if I was feeling confident, I was able to keep pace with his friends. Clean me up. <laughs> Strawberry. Very good, sir. <laughs> and I knew enough to engage his limitless knowledge of mainstays like Mass Effect, Lord of the Rings, and Super Mario. So long, gay Bowser. <laughs> In hindsight, it feels like we were always on the unknowing brink of becoming friends. We were driving the same speed, and our roads just needed a few more intersections. And somehow, becoming friends always felt like destiny. Funny then, that it was destiny that changed everything. One day, mere hours from the most anticipated release date of 2014, Blake approached me about joining him in an expanding list of friends in the stars. I admitted to him that I still don't have a new generation console. He immediately pulled out his wallet, crumpled whatever small bills he had into my hand, and told me to go buy a PlayStation. Blake's enthusiasm was contagious, and this was the invitation I had been waiting for. How much is it? I was late to the game by the time I had saved up $400 for my gleaming new Destiny bundled Chatter White PlayStation 4, but I was eagerly welcomed by Blake into a PlayStation Network friendship that would change at least the next 10 years of my life. We spent hours on school and work nights until 2, sometimes 3 a.m., choosing the Templar into the abyss and bearing the weight of darkness to Crota's throne. And that was just our weekly Tuesday night raid. The rest of the time anyone had to log in was filled with more PvE, PvP, social space flash mobs than you could shake the last word at. On some of our long strolls through the tower, we would chat about life as a guardian, and one time, we just spent 15 minutes doing this. Wolf age, a presentiment of the collapse. Besides perfecting the rhythm of the crouch dance, I began to understand what motivated Blake. If anyone in the clan was ever wondering, wait, who were the House of Wolves? Blake was your walking grimoire card, an ever vigil lore keeper for the stories and secrets of the solar system. Should the Awoken ever need an ally, I will call on you. And expect you to answer. She's saying you owe us, Guardian. 
Many of those nights were genuinely some of the most digital fun I'd ever had. <laughs> Not the exploder thing. No. <laughs> But in the shadow of the darkness, we also did as any good clan members eventually do, and pissed each other off. Don't do that. Anyone in this buyer of Crota will testify, and there were more than a few moments where self-indulgence, pride, and r and Jesus turned on us and caused clan chaos. I don't, that's like, Eliminated. that's stupid. Whilst repeating the Gorgon's Lair for the 17th time, you would find us at our worst in feuds or fallouts. Well done! or just flagrant interruptions by Chad. Can I think you're walk down? Yes. I, I say we do a tier system, so I think Taylor you I should think... Be... Huh, that team's going places. While we were all guilty of sending each other into the enraged state, Blake and I had a special ability to send each other tumbling over the edge. On more than one of Blake's bad days, I would literally push his character off a cliff with my tumbler from my own incipient glee, sending us straight into conflict. We sent more than a few page-long blue texts apologizing and reconciling, but somewhere out of that crucible of conflict, Blake learned to be a little less sensitive and I learned I could stand to be a little less overbearing and chisel away some misshapen identity. Can't let that stand in our way. Flawed as the game and the gamers were, Destiny had worked its space magic. We're in this together now. If a common interest in a shared struggle is all it takes to make a friend, Blake and I had generated enough motes of light to kickstart a spaceship into faster than light travel. As the video games played on, I had started taking our friendship IRL. More than once I would show up at the front door of his apartment completely unannounced. It was here that I met Oliver and Alicia. And I'm Alicia Catherine Looney. In Blake and Alicia's apartment, we watched Major League Gaming, we discussed the true nature of the Force, and we talked shop about his carnivorous plant collection. Blake is deep into the world of reptiles, and I have a certain affinity for Lego. Blake was just as good a friend through those small distractions as he was to the bigger life developments like a breakup. I once knew a girl in the years of my youth. Then, we went to Mexico. Remember interrupting Chad? Chad is about to say that he thinks that we should all go to Cabo San Lucas. You will eat ships by the fire, and be like, sorry. In the same month I had had my heart crushed by that aforementioned breakup, Someday. cracking open a cold one with the Beach Boys sounded pretty good. This is the second invitation I had been waiting for. So, I said yes. And these are the only two pictures I took. Man, I really needed more footage to talk about this part. Fortunately, I tricked Blake into sending me these. From Destiny to Mexico. The trip came packaged with every tourist trapping you'd expect from American 20-somethings in Cabo. Tyler was kicked off the beach for obvious disregard for the rules. It is forbidden. I discovered no less than two poolside margaritas was all that was required for my first experience of intoxication. And Chad was less than pleased when we walked two hours to a movie theater to find our chosen showing of the 2015 action film Mad Max Fury Road was in Spanish. ¿Queréis salir de esta comida? ¡Nos vamos! And justice? Well... But the watershed moment that changed everything happened just outside our timeshare in an unassuming garden of rocks crawling with iguanas. Blake was determined to catch one. And catch an iguana he did. We're talking the 1998 monster film Godzilla Radioactive Mutant Iguana. Crucial as this moment is to the story, these are the only pictures that Blake or I have. So if you use your imagination, I'll try to fill in the gaps. In the ensuing action scene, Blake took a bite to the thumb and it was nothing less than bloody. During their argument of wills, the iguana made it clear that if Blake wasn't going to let go, well, then neither would she. 
And yet, even as Blake was making every sensible effort to get the iguana's razor-edged teeth out of his flesh, he was engrossed in the thrill of being so close to nature. Through an obviously painful grimace, he was still teaching us about lizards. Their scales are so granular and tiny, They're, they feel like silk. They're very soft. In spite of the bodily punishment, Blake was enjoying this experience. In theory, I knew Blake was interested in reptiles, but I guess I had never experienced the person who makes such a spontaneous and dramatic switch in this kind of flow state. Still, if Blake ever wanted his thumb back, this iguana needed to let it go. He is still on me. He's still biting me. He's still on to me. He's not letting go! There was an idea. Stark knows this. The idea was to pour a small amount of alcohol into the lizard's mouth, triggering a release. She could either hold her alcohol better than me, or Bud Light really is just water because it didn't work. And yet the whole time all this was happening, I felt like I was on the verge of some inevitable realization. I had been Blake's friend for eight months now, and I hadn't seen it. And it took pouring beer into an open wound for it to hit me. Like some kind of visceral epiphany. The magic moment on which the story hangs. This is what Blake is meant to do. The nerd. The entertainer. The enthusiast. The lore keeper. The inner reptile. The teacher. A trip to the high rooms said to be uncrackable. The gate's opening. Got it. It all meets at the intersection of... Jeff Corwin? Wait, what? Yeah, Jeff Corwin. As a kid, Blake idolized this guy. The juxtaposition of cracking popcorn and culture jokes while leaping onto a snake in a Louisiana swamp was the balance of the force Blake's galaxy was searching for. It's a very large reptile that I want to grab before it grabs me. <laughs> Something just moved past my leg. <laughs> yeah! no! Just look at them. When it feels threatened, they'll coil up. Oh! And they specialize. That's a snake. In the conservation <laughs> of raptors. Yeah, head stays. Want to swivel on them? Boy, this guy's got a lot of nerve. Oh my god! Stop it! Let's some sort of a freeze. Bone. Let's okay, show that didn't work. Side of her body okay. And so how about we just leave? At his most hopeful, Blake has explained to me that jobs like this would be the coolest way he could spend a life. While traveling in places like India and Southeast Asia, I have captured snakes that look just like this one right here. But shortly after that breath of hope, he tells me it's never going to happen. It's too cringy. There's nothing, this isn't gonna ever happen. <laughs> it's never, it's not gonna work. Just ain't going. Every strength that would make Blake an amazing modern Jeff Corwin is held down by an insidious darkness that subdues his hope and clouds his vision. Inside Blake is a dark side cave of humility. Humility? But that's like a virtue, right? Yes, and that very modesty makes Blake a disarming and charming, relatable human guy. But... 
With appropriate humility, we plied the oracle with questions. Well, Blake doesn't do appropriate humility. He does a thing I call self-defeating humility. Plus, here's the thing I realized. It's just going to be too cringy. You're so much braver than I ever will. You guys have such a cool, unique experience that I probably won't ever have. Gotta be funny. So, I'm telling you, there's so much planning. So, just wouldn't work. Uh, excuse me, can I ask you guys a question? Yeah, what's up? If you were on YouTube and you saw a guy do a show about carnivorous plants, would you watch it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> what would it take? What would it take? Yeah. Probably running through here. <laughs> <laughs> That's against the law. We literally did that an hour ago. <laughs> Seriously. Link to that video in the description below. It's too cringy. It's just too cringy. Everything well, about it is cringy. Sorry. It's okay. I know it is. That's the saddest thing. That's like the last. I'd rather be volatile than cringy. I'd rather be inappropriate. Gone violent. Gone violent. Did you and grab the backpack? Yeah. Curses. Yeah. <laughs> we should go get it. Given power and allowed to grow, this kind of self-humiliation smothers his potential. Blake once told me that he was a stepping stone. At his least hopeful, he's convinced that his life is this glorified pebble for others to walk over to reach their own destiny. He told me that you can be the kind of person moving towards greatness or the kind of person that others step on. And I admit, he does this willingly out of altruism to be the stepping stone and it's one of the best things about him, but can a person do both? I believe this nerdy nobody from nowhere Oregon can. If the 2017 epic space opera Star Wars The Last Jedi taught us anything, it's that Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. I hear you asking, what's the point? What do I want? Where is this all going? What's it all amount to? Well, I want to see Blake shake off that self-defeating humility and start a YouTube channel. YouTube channel about um, experiencing the natural world through the macro binoculars of a nerd. There. It would have to have a some sort of name for the channel, like uh, Nature Moments. No, Nature Valley. Blake's Nature Time. A nerd in nature. A nerd bird. In the <laughs> where we're out in the forest and there's. Sexy animals. Gosh, no. That's just inappropriate. That's not the direction I want to go at all. It's time to eat some slime time live. Slime time live. Uh, that's another copyright issue. We could call this Star Wars. Let's call it Disney's Star Wars. Let's call it Disney Star Wars Rogue One Star Wars Story. My God. <laughs> Looney something? Looney's Toys R Us. Can we call it that? Not that these were bad ideas, but a good name a good name is memorable, catchy, inspiring. It means something. It sets the very DNA of the channel. A good name actually kills things on camera. I've got an idea. Bingo. Dino DNA. How about the Blake Looney experience? There. That's good, right? I'd worry about a name like that inflating the sense of self, but this is Blake. It's perfect. Here we go. Ah, welcome to the new American dream, YouTube. I just want to say one thing. God bless America. The golden age of Animal Planet has passed. TV had its day, and the kids of America turned their eyes towards a new stage. A stage where the subgenre of a subgenre of Petco dumpster diving can not only exist, but thrive. Let me to clarify. This isn't standard protocol what's behind the generic retail store dumpster diving. This is Petco dumpster diving. Uh, we just got on the road and we're headed to our first location. We're headed to a, a Petco. Petco. Petco's. Petco first. And I spotted something by Petco that I could make some dala. So I'm going to go and pick it up. I'll take you guys with me. Let's go. 
Please don't ask me to explain the trail of suggestive videos that got me here. How'd you get it? You don't want to know. Make no mistake, YouTube has a dark side. Hold this dog. Look, I'm going to decline to comment. I will say loganpaul.com slash shot. It was good. Maverick movement is still alive. It's always going to be alive. We're out here doing it different. We're out here changing the world every single day. Loganpaul.com slash shot. Uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> we there's a lot of things I could criticize for. Uh, we clearly, fame isn't everything. Please, please subscribe, Russ. I will cry on camera. I'm gonna actually start weeping. That's what they do. The famous YouTubers. Blake isn't wrong. <laughs> And people love it. People love that. Come on, come on. We're gonna go interview the dog Tony that just got cheated on. One word. Patient. Forty thousand dollars. One hundred and forty thousand. Patient. This is turn this off. This is. This is what? You, don't grab my camera. I'm not grabbing your camera. Okay. I think, I think you're being you're being very aggressive. It's it's so it's like actually really really sad. He's right again. Sometimes the light from YouTube is pretty dim. But... There is another. Fighting in the trenches, there is hope. Even in this last year, YouTube continued to be a seemingly limitless plot of transformation. YouTube will show you the evolution of a prankster of online scammers turned publisher of Nigerian photographers. YouTube will take a builder of laughable robots and turn her into the co-host of Tested with that guy from Mythbusters. YouTube is a place where a tearful infant calmed by a family singing becomes 1,000 subscribers and counting. And this is just the good news that's happened in the last year. Yeah, there are a dozen other nature channels out there, but if I learned anything from the bookend that sits on my shelf, it's that even in a saturated market, there is always potential to innovate and teach somebody about this wide world. I don't know about its policies, algorithms, and the future of the platform, but I'll bet the impact of the generation that grew up with YouTube is just getting started. There would have to be like a million more hours of planning to actually do something like this. Because people don't just go out with a camera, film something awesome with every slight detail. Like look at Ethan and Elo's channel. The thing he does with the coughing. <coughs> they planned that. That's like something that he, that he does that's successful. Yes, it is. And yes, it would take planning. But if we were able to turn shaky cam footage from our haphazard road trips from a year ago into even mildly entertaining videos, I think Blake can do it. And yeah, the human being attention span is depressing. I guess they need blood splattered on their faces to keep them from yawning. But it's not for them. It's for you. The audience that's still watching this video to see what happens next. In the face of a hundred reasons why not. What's next will be determined by the spirit of a rebel. Before I get lost, don't mistake this for an elevator pitch of a wide-eyed optimist, of which I am proud, for what's going to make a successful channel in 2018. This is about Blake. It's about Blake living out a fuller potential. You can talk my ear off all day about the foolishness of telling a person they can do anything, and I'll listen because you're probably right. But for lack of a better way to say it, Blake can do this. And maybe there is a better way to say it. Plants. Reptiles, Star Wars, Passion. Long ago, the four worlds lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the YouTube nation attacked. Only the biologist, master of all four disciplines, could teach them. Look how old you've become. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. 26 years passed and my brother and I discovered the new biologist, a total nerd named Blake. And although his skills with a lightsaber are great, he has a lot to learn before he can save anyone. But I believe 
Blake can change the world. From Jeff Corwin to this galaxy and the next. And from there, well, who knows where this all leads. Thank you for seeing this through to the end. If you believe in Blake and want to see what's next, we've got a few videos on the Blake Looney Experience channel to check out. As dangerous as it is to ask for comments on YouTube, I would love to hear any encouragement, feedback, or thoughts you might have. I'm going to show this to Blake soon, and maybe in the spirit of you two, I'll make a reaction video. <laughs> Depending on how Blake takes this, there'll be more content coming to you soon. And now for a heck of a lot of credits. <laughs>